Okay, so some rather shocking news. Arizona's basketball team has self-imposed a one-year postseason ban. The NCAA is investigating stemming from the 2017 college corruption of recruiting, five level one allegations, and they are charged with a lack of institutional control and failure to monitor. And head coach Sean Miller is charged with lack of head coach control. Um, they received a notice in October and they requested a referral of this case to to the created independent accountability resolution process. Uh, further allegations involving former player Raul uh, Alkins. I think I probably botched, uh, botched that name, but I said the best I can. Raul, uh, Raul uh, Alkins is his name. And Arizona indefinitely suspended former assistant coach Mark Phelps from 2019 NCAA rules violation. And this was reported by Jeff Borsello, ESPN staff writer. Um, so, Nate, what do you think about Arizona B-ball self-imposing a one-year postseason ban? That's crazy, man. That that that's just I don't know what else to say. That's man. They they were wait they were illegally getting players and whatever coaches you know a, a lack of responsible head coaching. I mean oh man it's all there, it's all there. I mean what else what else is there for me to say? This is just absolutely ridiculous. And you know they're self now they're self imposing a one year ban in the postseason. Good I mean good I mean you. you you're illegally getting players. Your your lack of coaching is, is it's all there. I mean, what else what else is there for me to say? And they suspended their coach as far as I'm concerned. Uh, from 2019, am I correct? Right? Yeah. So, right. right so, although yeah, he was man. a former assistant head coach. Oh, he was a so. former assistant. Okay, all right. But still, I mean, even if you're not like the head head coach, you're an assistant. You still have some kind of role on that team. You know, you you. You know, you got to be responsible for your players. You got to be responsible for what they do. You're responsible for what happens on the court. You know, that's your game plan and all of that. You're, you have, you know, even though you're assistant coach, you probably have some part of that. And, you know, to see the lack of coaching and, and, and you know, in the illegal, um, and, you know, and, you know all, the, all the ways they got the players illegally is some, oh, man, that, that's an ugly situation they got themselves into. I really don't know what else to say. Right. And the fact that this has been going on since 2017, it's been going on for quite a few years now. And so, I mean, it seemed like they really started uh, picking up on this last uh, this year in October. And so, I mean, Arizona, uh, Arizona's basketball team kind of beat the NCAA to it. I mean, I feel like if it went if the NCAA got to it first, I feel like there'd be like further precautions involved with it because the NCAA is very tough with you know, like uh, certain recruiting to, towards players. I mean, you've seen what they did to the uh, second overall pick, James Wiseman. He didn't play for the, like, good 20-something games. So, I mean, so, I mean, they kind of beat them to it. But, again, this is very shocking to me, you know, and it's just irresponsible and unnecessary on, on both sides from the players to the recruiting to the coaching. And, honestly, they did create a uh, – the team did make a statement. They made a few. Uh, so the statements was the University of Arizona is self-imposing a one-year postseason ban on the UA men's basketball program as a proactive measure in its ongoing NCAA enforcement process. The decision is an acknowledgement that the NCAA's investigation revealed that certain former members of the MIBB staff displayed serious lapses in judgment and departure from the university's expectation of honest and ethical behavior. This is also this is also in accord with the penalty guidelines of the NCAA for the type of violations involved. The decision also reinforces the institution's com commitment to accountability and integrity, as well as serving the best long-term in interests of the university and the men's basketball team program. And then they said the decision of to self-impose a postseason ban was extremely difficult, as we recognize the impact that it has on current student athletes. And they said, we will continue to cooperate fully with the NCAA enforcement process and continue to support the hardworking young men in our men's basketball program. And then they said, I understand and fully support the university's decision to self-impose a one-year postseason ban on our men's basketball program. And they said, our team will remain united and aggressively compete to win a Pac-12 championship. So, I mean, I mean, so this doesn't seem like it's over yet, you know? They did get themselves the one season, the one uh the one year postseason ban, but this doesn't seem over yet. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the punishments will be a little bit lighter since they're cooperating more with the NCAA because some guys just because some teams and some players and coaches recruiting, they just don't. 
and then the NCAA catches them and gives them a harder punishment. You know, it's kind of like prison. Like, you know, you like you cooperate with police, you know, you get less time or like, you, you know what I'm saying? This is kind of what it reminds me of. So, I mean, in my opinion, in my opinion, this is far from over. They are lucky that they do get to compete for a Pac-12 championship, which is something very important. It's not as important as the NCAA championship, but it is definitely up there. So, I mean, they didn't lose that and they can still play basketball, which is a good thing. You know, it's not like they're banned for a year from playing basketball, but more punishment se- will probably seem to come. And when we get the news on that, we'll let everybody know.